do you have to go to the loot school to learn these things? It is not that difficult to smash a few shop windows and grab a few things, but some of the events we have witnessed in the past few days have been so strange that it is hard to believe they are real. In fact, if many people were put a major Hollywood disaster movie, they would probably reject them as unrealistic. But it's important to understand what's going on outside, because these looters give us a preview of the upcoming attractions. If they are going to sink into such depths now, what will they will be willing to do when things really get worse in this country? There are many examples I can share with you, but I think I will start with the looters who decided to use a telescopic forklift to break the doors of a Best Buy store in Fairfield, California. A particularly brazen attempt by looters to storm a store in Fairfield, California has been caught on video showing them commandering what appears to be a telescopic forklift to force their way in. The video has emerged shoving vandals using heavy equipment on the doors of the Best Buy store in Fairfield, a city in Solana County located between San Francisco and Sacramento. I think you should never leave a telescopic forklift where the moral looters can find in this story, now that criminals see how far they can escape, they will become stronger than ever, and the entire west coast will be a major danger zone for the foreseeable future. In the East Bay area, police say that caravans filled with looters roam systematically in search of targets. Authorities, these looters are trying to demolish their caravans, but these have proved to be quite difficult because most of them are heavily armed. In other parts of Northern California, a group of looters made an absolutely striking robbery like something from a Fast and Furious movie. Police in Northern California are searching for suspects after rioters reportedly stole more than 70 premium cars from a dealership near San Francisco Sunday night. San Landro Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership owner Carlos Hidalgo said that although he blocked the exits as a precaution, the thieves started ramming, ramming until they could get out. They took out chains and fence posts. It was a very malicious act, Fox 2 in Auckland reported. This means that at least 70 looters must have landed at this dealership at the same time, because each of these vehicles will need a driver. If you stop and try to think about what it looks like, it sends a chill to your spine. Of course, it's not just the West Coast that deals with the biggest guilt. Rachel Alding talked about the crazy loot we witnessed in Midtown Manhattan. Hard to describe how rampant the looting was tonight in Midtown Manhattan and how lawless it was, complete anarchy, literally hundreds of stores up and down Broadway, 5th Ave, 6th Ave, kids ruling the streets like it was a party. These are shops where the Wall Street Elite shop is located. If law enforcement agencies cannot even keep this area safe, do you think any city in the whole country is really safe at this point? And some of these looters are not exactly poor. In fact, the New York Post reports that some looters are attracting stores in luxury SUV. New York City looters were caught on camera pulling up in luxury SUVs, including what was claimed to be a pricey Rolls Royce before apparently looting an upscale retail store in Manhattan, according to footage shared on social media. The video filmed by Justin Miller and Kate Feldman shows a group of men in masks hopping out 
of two cars and charging through a smashed door in Soho before running back outside carrying boxes of goods on Monday night. Honestly, I don't know what the police in New York are doing. They had to know that luxury retail stores in Midtown Manhattan will be the main targets, but this was still allowed. Looting in Philadelphia was absolutely crazy. Just yesterday, I argued that looters were allowed to loot a pharmacy for 15 hours. In other parts of the city, a very ambitious loot started to die in an attempt to blow up the ATM machine. A looter has been killed in a botched ATM explosion in Philadelphia that police believe was part of a coordinated effort to raid 30 machines across the city over a series of two nights. Police said the 24-year-old man died early Tuesday, several hours after attempting to break into an ATM with explosives in the north of the city. Needless to say, the bank robbery has nothing to do with justice for George Floyd. Thousands of criminals all over America are using George Floyd's protests as an opportunity to commit crime, and it is so sober that this happens so widely. At this point, things got so crazy that the looters were looting even from other looters. The US goes insane and many people believe this is just the beginning. Of course, all this widespread illegalness worries millions of ordinary citizens, millions deeply. Many people are deeply concerned that such behavior can begin to spread to the suburbs and beyond. In fact, Polk County Sheriff has clearly admitted that they threatened some people to take their criminal behavior to the neighborhoods in Jude Grady District. Grady said the department had received information on social media that some folks were threatening to take their criminal conduct into the neighborhoods. I will tell them if you value your life, they probably shouldn't do that in Polk County, Grady said, because the people of Polk County like guns. They have guns, I encourage them to own guns, and they are going to be in their homes tonight with their guns loaded. If we try to break into their homes to steal, to set fires, I'm highly recommending they blow you back out of the house with their guns. So leave the community alone. I hope things start to cool down for at least a while. Many Americans understand that more explosions of violence are only a matter of time, and so they are preparing to defend themselves and their families. Arms sales are definitely rising, and a shopkeeper in New York says he is so busy and literally sold out. Phones have been ringing off the hook and the line has been wrapped around the building at Coliseum Gun Traders in Uniondale, Nassau County ever since the coronavirus pandemic began. And now with protests and rioting after the killing of George Floyd, the store has seen another enormous spike in sales. Keeping the shelves stocked has been hard, store owner Andy Chevnov said. We are starting out this week with a fair amount of merchandise. We are running out, literally running out, Chernov said. Never thought I would say that. Just six months ago, life in America looked very normal, but now everything has changed. All the anger that has been developing for years now begins to boil and elections in November will further increase tension. Please be very careful outside, because our society is really beginning to fall apart. The truth is that looting and violence are an existential threat to the future of this nation and we systematically destroy the very bright future that our children and grandchildren should have. Most of idea, comment, information and criticism containing in these videos have been created by Daily News Report. Before making any important investment decision, use the information contained in these videos as a starting point for conducting your own research. 
If you make any investment or legal decision, it is advised to consult an expert before making this decision.